some slight giggles. Laughter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're, in, you're, you're introducing us, right, Cormac? Yeah, oh. yeah, don't worry, don't worry. We <laughs> okay. have, we oh, we're just all going to stare silently the whole time, exactly. like creeps. I'm going to start silently. Oh. But yeah. let me introduce <laughs> and welcome all these lovely chaps here to our today's Christmas special, joined by the fantastic voice actors of, uh, well, most of your characters they can meet. Some didn't make it. One sadly got s swallowed up by the warp. You might see it by the missing spot up there. And uh, <laughs> Ablard, I think, I hope he's safe. We'll, we shall see, we shall see. But with no further ado, let us jump into this special that we prepared for you today. Good ladies and gentle beards. First, we want to give a shout out quickly to Foundry BTD, who is uh, presenting us and giving us the opportunities to use this virtual tabletop with all kinds of sound mechanics, fog of war, lighting, and and wonderful way to play online with your friends, all kinds of tabletop RPGs, maybe D&D, Pathfinder, Dark Heresy, or in our case, a homebrew self-made rogue trader adaptation of the Dark Heresy rulebook. So it will be not one-to-one. -one. Otherwise, we will spend our time here probably three hours rolling dice instead of telling a story. And uh, that might be, well, not a good clue. Then also shout out to my dear streamer colleagues, Luality and Berkey Black, who have recorded a surprise for our dear voice actors that will meet them during the session. Also, big, big shout out to Make-A-Wish International, who take their special time to take care of kids everywhere and make wishes granted. So today's session, by just watching, you are already supporting it. Every ad revenue that will be earned earned today will be redonated towards the cause and for those spending $100 plus towards the charity they get a zip file with all our assets from our virtual tabletop session over 40 take tokens all the maps that we have designed and you can freely access them via that uh, then also big shout out to our artist D.E. Zigner Victor aka Mintsnell Art who did all the tokens for us Iliavi who did the fantastic overlay here for us and Christoph for the battle maps lastly but not least <laughs> if that was even English, I threw the ball over to my dear, dear associates here who are with me, starting with Chris Sharps, our Adeptus Mechanicus Pascal. Hi there, uh, my name is Chris Sharps and I voice Pascal in Rogue Trader. Let the cycle be discontinued. Oh, fantastic. I love it. And we're going strongly over to an bigger individual, bearded strongly with axe in arm, Ulfar, aka Oliver Smith. Hello, I'm Oliver Smith, voice actor from Northern Ireland, and I, vo uh, voyers, I voice Ulfar Redmayne of the Space Wolves. Up next we have, well, a Xenos among the group, an oddity I would say, voiced by Will Dorenzi, our Xenos Drukari Marazai. Yes, yes, uh, this evening I will be playing Marazai Aziriash, Eviscerator of Illyridos, Blaze of the Barkag Kingdom, and Slayer of Ferocious the Pale. Up next we have our lovely Elsie Lovelock, who is playing a mutant navigator named Cassia. Hey everyone, I'm Elsie Lovelock. I voice Cassia Orcelio, your navigator in Rogue Trader. Very happy to be here. I'm excited to have everybody on board. Samara, Naomi, playing a mostly sober cult trader named Jai. Yes, mostly. Hi, I'm Samara Naomi, and I am cult trader Jai Heidari. Hello, Sherin. <laughs> I love the voice around Jai. Up next, we have Nola Klopp as our sniper Xenos lady, the Aldari Elliot. Hello, everyone. My name is Nola Klopp. And I am the voice of Iliet. And she says stuff like, I am not your Xenos pet monkey. Mm. Speaking of monkey, she's talking about us humans being <laughs> in a lower race. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily monkey as in, but uh, it's an old term they used for an other species. And now for us humans. Going on to a strong ending, as Chad is already going on here with Mommy, sister of the battle. Tamara Fritz voicing <laughs> the battle mommy, as audience call her, Mrs. Argenta. 
Hello, I'm Tamara Fritz. I voice Argenta. Um, oh goodness, what does she say? For the Emperor! That's that's tef- definitely something that she, that she would say for the emperor. And with that, I grab everybody of the group here to the scene. Hello, everyone. Thank you kindly for joining me on this lovely, lovely afternoon, night, morning, wherever the time zone you may be. And um, with that, we're moving our camera to the vast, dark expanse of the 31st millennium. We're grabbing the zoom out to have a big picture of what is going on. And uh, in the grim and dark of the 31st millennium, the Empire of Man stretches across a galaxy besieged by war, heresy, and the malevolent forces of chaos. Amidst the vast expanse of turmoil lies a region known as the Corona's Expanse, a lawless frontier beyond the Emperor's light, where the rule of the Empire weakens its grasp and warp anomalies grow more so treacherous. And to the rogue traders, independent explorers granted ancient charters to seek out the new worlds, exploit hidden riches, and expand the reach of the Empire. These daring individuals navigate the tumultuous seas of the Corona's expense aboard a vast starship. The crew, a mix of adventurers, mercenaries, and opportunists, freed from the shackles of conventional imperial law, rogue traders are both the pioneers and the outlaws of the void. Their power is limited only to the vastness of space and the threats that dwell within it. Our merry group here is in the footsteps of uh, the rogue trader, who apparently is not coming back from his last shipment that he should do. They follow him up to an outpost on the far edge of the Corona's expense, they know that it is leaded by the Adept- Adeptus Exploratus, an Adeptus cult that has made it out here into the Corona's expense, trying to seize all kinds of Xenos technology and find the missing clue of the lore and um, well tech that has gone lost over the last decades. With that, they're falling up into an outpost that looks more like a starting of an Forge worlds. The, the air is very dusty, machines are grinding everywhere, and uh, moving parts, all this machinery, into a little square where we are meeting our lovely companions. They know that he went out with Abelard together to a discussion for a potential weapon deal, meeting with an individual who is well, doing some shady business in this kind of regard. He's the leader of a company called the INCH. And uh, this merry group is, uh, well, selling weapons from the Forge Worlds, doing all kinds of deals and merits for their own profit and for those who are trading with them. And uh, with that, you are at an, some somewhat of a bar, it looks like. There are two... Big, strong, shady-looking characters. They have implants. Half of the face are metallic. They have tubes hanging out around. And they look very grim and stare at you. What is it you want here? Well, we're looking for a friend of ours. Perhaps you've seen them. Friend? Friend in here? And he points over his shoulder into the room. Perhaps you would know them. They have a particular aura about them. A particular aura? Do they stink? Yes. Not quite. (laughs) Um, one of them does. Why, in my opinion, sometimes he smells quite bad. I think we have been awaiting this merry group over here. Be so kind as to... And he opens like a very heavy mechanical looking door that as it opens, you see it's pretty thick it's like fireproof and it seems like he's pushing that like a toy door open without any effort and it goes just with a crunchy sounding metallic noise up in their street mr gr awaits you who's going first into the merry establishment ulfar storming right in (laughs) 
Classic. Yeah, well, Argento is right behind Ulfa. Very good. There's, who's the three? I'm just going to... Ulfa's so big, I feel like I, I will just small behind and peek behind. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, you three going to please make us our first roll of today. Please roll me a D hundreds, and we're going to have a look at your perception to see if you perceive anything while moving in there while the others are following. Mm. Mm. Jai rolls 37. Very good. Azenta rolls 24. And we have a 38 Ooh. on Ulfar. Beautiful. As you go in there, you noticed that all the people who are apparently at that bar are actually kind of set up puppets. They ma machinerize a little bit up and down. They're like mannequins who try to remember uh to uh, try to resemble some remembrance of a humanoid moving up there having a chat within the bar if you would pass the window looking inside you would not be able to extinguish this kind of detail looking outside you would be just thinking oh well kind of full bar dubious looking bouncers at the door they probably are having a good time in there and uh, with that you're reaching an table made out of thick wood and material that is very rare and not really existing in the vast expense, apparently in the Corona's expense. So whoever has this table probably has also a lot of influence and uh, riches. And um, with that, you hear a very squeaky voice coming from the sides, hushing through and sitting down at the table. You see an individual with kind of pointy ears and tall hat has an uh, greenish Xenos! flushy beard <laughs> are you yelling this out loud <laughs> yes <laughs> uh. very good he's you just see him just smile and grin mischievously and some spiky teeth come out of his grin as you yell at him Xenos! and that individual with his greenish beard you can see also that his skin is also green and one of his arms and fingers are very delicate and uh, thin and long. The other one, bulky and strong, like he would have trained with just one arm all the time and left the other one aside. On the table, you see a golden placket saying, Mr. G. R. Well, uh, <laughs> I have awaited you. Finally, you are here. I have met your... Acquaintance or maybe your boss. What have you done with him? Well, I have something special prepared for you. Uh, before you get heisty, and he's looking at Ulfar being a ginormous being in front of him, probably twice or triple his size, casting <laughs> a shadow down on his table. Well, one moment. And he turns around. And he scrambles around and you see knickknacks flying around. And while you do that, you see the whole room is filled with all kinds of little screws and metal bars and arms and mechanical hydraulics. And it looks like a chop shop of electronics, more or less. And there's like cables flying down around. Ah, I found it. And he puts up a little really retro looking like TV on the table. He dusts it off and plucks some cable under the table into it. And all of a sudden it goes, a blue screen appears. And then you hear some kind of camera zooming in. And a room appears on the screen. And you recognize your Lord Captain up there in what appears to be shackles. She is in her Admiral clothing with her big Admiral hat looking now up at the camera. And uh, your Lord Captain Loyalty says to you, Where do we do? I did not hear anything. Pascal, uh, would you be able to tune this device? Yes, please stand by. <laughs> so good. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, play harder next time. This is your lord, Captain. I have been tricked and lured by a bargain of this fine individual in front of you. 
so by the emperor, follow up his request so I may be set free. Do not interfere nor attack. This is an order. Well, that make sure is enough. And he pulls out the block before the rogue trader can say the last word. Ulfar is already putting a hand to Argenta to stop her from shooting this man in the face. (laughs) (laughs) See, sir, it it was an order if it is not a Xenos trick. Well, uh, you have to... Argenta, my dear, calm down. Did you see our Lord Captain? Maybe she likes being tied up a little bit. I mean, she looks a little bit happy in there. I mean, I just don't get so stressed out. Maybe it's not so serious. Maybe this is just a fun little visit, side questy thing. I don't know. I don't know. Just calm I down. I don't know why one would enjoy this. This does. <laughs> well, not I can show you later if you want. I don't the TV understand is what you mean. And I do not like the technology you have showed this on. Well, if is... anyone needs any help being tied up. <laughs> oh, you, you have been uh, experiencing that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> is this All I this see is? from this individual is not one of passion. It is not red. It is green and brown hues, showing us that it is, in fact, deception and lies. Well, My algorithm agrees with that. This man is lying. Maybe not a man. But a filthy Xenos, I'm sorry. And if, uh, as you see that, you you see the two individuals that were standing at the door coming into the room behind you. The door shuts down. And uh, for some odd reason, there is a kind of metallic smell in the air. Pascal, please throw me a perception check. Only on the side tells me what to do, but I will do it as you've requested. <laughs> As far as you're concerned, he is the Omnissiah. I am the Omnissiah. I mean, yes, my name is John. <laughs> <laughs> the skull has a 59. Well, you sadly do not recognize that smell. You kind of can pinpoint it. You know it. And as that thought goes through your mind, then all of a sudden some clicks are here. And two big turrets are going down next to his table, aiming at you. Well, my dear friends, I see we are in a misunderstanding. The thing is, I have a particular individual who is, well, let's put it like a thorn in my side. Your captain assured me that he has a very capable troop, and uh, I just made sure that this capable troop does what I need. Because I'm Mr. GR, and a lot of business is relying on these fine, and as he says fine, he's looking at his hawkish arm, uh, fine hands of mine. So, we have here two options. You indulge and uh, help me out, or your rogue trader, or you. Well, most likely both. So Enough of the do? presentries. What do you want? Well, you see, I deal in weapons. And some individual every cycle, when there is a celebration going on, arc, arc, I can't remember the name. Some some saint, Sanguni, Saranguni, Sangunius, something like that. Every time the cycle is over, and shipment of weapons is being placed among this future forage, forge world. And uh, I need this to stop because business is booming and this makes it bad. So you go with my pilot Hans and he will fly you to the last known beacon destination where we tracked one of those shipments. Good. Will we be flying with Hans solo? Yes, I trust you just, to not do anything just, stupid. Just checking, it is indeed Han Solo, just understanding, thank you. This is for the sake of the rogue trader's life, Mr. Oh, what was your name? G.R. I will call you Green One. No, you can call me whatever you want. It's pretty chill of you, Mr. GR. I really appreciate you being open to any name. So I could call you, like, I don't know, like, 
fucking hash mag and you'd be okay with that. He, he, he pulls like up a little device to try to deceive or, or decipher what you told him. Well, as long as you are putting that thorn out of my sight, we're good. This guy's really chill. I feel like we could just go get this weapon stuff, bring it back and get the Lord Captain and... Hey, okay, right? I see nothing wrong with this. I agree. I think we should help Shitface get what he wants done. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the, the guns aim locking at you. <laughs> you see some dots at your forehead appearing. Mm. Well, well are you like sure I cannot your... use my bolter to end this shroud? Your turrets are adorable, but they are also not activated nor loaded. Do you want to test this? Do you? I... I feel it would be best to just play along for now. Finally, a man of, of my liking. <laughs> and he tries to like slap you me. on your no. forearm as like a friendly. <laughs> and he's like, he it. <laughs> just gets in return. <laughs> well, I have no little surprise for you. Yes, I need to ensure that. Well, after you've done what you want to do, and I send your rogue traitor, captain, lord, whatever, up there to you to meet you, yeah? Hans will go come back and then bring him to you once you have succeeded and sent over through the Vox cast that uh, you have done what I have wanted from you, yeah? And this will be some sort of, mm, well, let's say it, insurance that you're not coming down hailing on me to end my... Subtle, and it looks very awkward with his delicate fingers and that chonky arm doing doing this kind of motion. Did not uh, come down on me. Please stop showing us that arm. <laughs> well, please follow me. And he it's stands, really disgusting. <laughs> as he stands up, you can see of his form. And please, Marazai, make you now and perception check. With uh, we cannot call it advantage. There's not such thing as advantage. You roll two times and. Mm -hmm you are taking the best role out of it. Uh, for those watching, we are having some sort of homebrew adaptation to make this fast paced because Rogue Trade itself is a very delicate and complicated thing. 48, that is more than enough. 12, even better. You recognize from his shape as he walks in front of you and in some of his backside armor of his kind of coaty, uh, business-like looking suit, that an arm is through a hole in that suit. So he has like a third arm coming out of his back, holding in what looks like a pistol also aiming at you, like he's having eyes inside of his back, uh, kind of like a reassurance towards his back. And uh, you noticed from his walk, the gun is in, in his arm and the armor, he must be one of mine. He is as you, a uh, Drukari. Why he's green? Why he has three arms? We don't know. Oh, Matt, now, now that that has been uh, revealed, I really want to kill him. <laughs> well, it's, it's, just, it's just uh, with, uh, Marakai who's uh, noticing that kind of thing. Uh, right, right. This is me out of out of the. Yeah. <laughs> I say. So our gender to you all, you know, they all look the same to you, which is, you know, part of the problem sometimes running away with you around the, you know. That's Stars, true. you see yeah. them all. Well, please follow me into this uh, insurance room, as I call it. And with that, he opens an, a back door, a side alley to what was there before. And a uh, little secret room opens behind his desk, clicks up with the wall. And you noticed a room filled with decorations, odd blinking things, colors of reds and whites, stuff of wrapping. It looks very, well, holiday-like as you want to have it. Well, this here is uh, my first item of security. Please, you shall grab it. And uh, he goes to Argenta and giving her a chainsword, a huge chainsword, who is, uh, which is red and white striped and it smells very sweety. It has a little mm. note to it that you can read if you want to. And in I, the same yeah, motion- Yeah, I would like to read. Yeah, it says on the on the note, it says, lick me. Oh, God. <laughs> that was um, very exciting, Sherin. 
Not all of us get excited by commands. <laughs> oh, no. He's giving you that, and in the same motion, uh, his two goons are starting to disarm you to grab your stuff that you have and putting them into a box. Ah, don't don't worry. This box will come with your rogue trader, as you said. This is just a predicament uh, of of security, so you don't use those weaponry on my humble boat. And with that, he turns up to Cassia, giving her a huge staff, uh, similar to her staff, only that the the top of it is crooked and bowed down, basically a huge candy cane with some nice decoration on top placed. Uh, that is for you. Also has a little note to it, if you want to read it. Yes, please. On the Can I read it? On the note, it says, what you do, think it will happen, it will not. Well, I am quite used to cryptic messages. I am not familiar with this type of decoration. Is this the ex Mars I have heard so much about in my books? <laughs> it could be. <clears throat> it's just... Uh, something that I make sure that you, and as he explains it, you feel, uh, as you're grabbing it, a sharp, kind of stingy feel into your palm. And uh, when you look at your and your cane and you try to take your hand away, you notice your hand is fully attached to that cane. It sparkles some devices into your palm and, and kind of connects with your flesh. And all of a sudden, all the colors that you normally see around people are dimmed down. It's kind of like making a zoom and you have a kind of a focus moment. And it's not as you can see into the bright future uh, or, or get a feeling of your surroundings. And it's very narrow. You can feel what's happening in this room, but you don't have this foresight as you normally have as a navigator. This is extremely odd, as well as the minty scent emanating from this staff. My visions seem to be focused down. What is happening, pray tell, small creature? Um, yeah, uh, just a precaution, because I know that your humble uh, uh, thingy up there can be very dangerous. And, well, if you try to open it now, we all are safe. Well, if you insist. Well, you know, it didn't just, sound confident. just precautions. And uh, this will be very liked by the likes of you, I guess. And he turns to Jay, giving her an, what looks like a golden goblet with uh, a little outreach and carvings inside. It looks very cryptic. It has all kinds of runes on it and a little golden wrap around the top of the goblet. And he hands it over to you and also has a little note attached to it. Thank you very much. I love a nice chalice. This is very beautiful. Where did you get it? Uh, let's not go into this detail. It uh, is, you know, business secrets. You probably need to know. Very and suspicious, but I still like your style, GR. What does this little note say? It's very hard to read. And as you can look at the notes, it says over there, bottomless pit. And as you pull the chalice closer to you, the little runes are lightning, lighting up and, and smell and a door of cinnamon and mixed with some fruit and, and smell that Jai very much knows. Alcohol comes into the nose. Well, it's something that will maybe help you. And uh, he gives you also a uh, laser and, and bolt pistol to your hands together with that goblet. and takes away everything that you else had on you. Listen, Mr. GR, if you just want me to get drunk on this delicious smelling fruity cinnamon and shoot around people with my pistol, I'm here for you. I got it. I love this. Well, exciting. Cheers. Exciting. Well, for you. And he looks at uh, Marazai being... Uh, Kind of like the most mysterious, dangerous looking from all the characters here that are present. I have uh, something for you especially. And he hangs two jingle bells around you. But you notice as he hangs them, they're not, they're not making any sounds. They're like 
soundless as they move. You hear something climpering inside it. And then he puts a necklace around you that clicks and it has a mistletoe in the front. And as you look down, you feel a sharp sting going up into your chest. Nearly as you feel like it's it's puncturing your bone of the chest. This is um, something very special for you, my lot. I know of... Uh, and now he says it out loud and maybe somebody catches it as well. Our technology. I'll just make sure that you don't come from behind and slit my throat while we're talking here. So be wary what you do or else this little mistle too will be the last thing you hear and see. And in that hmm. moment, if you do a notion, you hear of a sudden your bells that are attached to you doing a very loud ringing, binging going on that are like a, a bell tower going next to you. Boom! And everything's hmm. super loud. But be careful with your movements, maybe. Hmm. Any questions? Thank you for me? placing your balls around my neck. And with that, he goes back while everybody's getting stripped. And uh, let's look at Pascal. He's like, looking to the left, looking to the right, not really sure knowing what he should uh, give him. And with that, he's pulling the lights from the ceiling that are attached around it, blinking in red, green, yellow, and it turns nearly into some sort of whip, and he's attaching it all around. Well, um, I know where you go. It might be dark. This might help. Your gift is acceptable. Yeah. You know, you notice in his motion that he's not really prepared for Adept Adeptus Mechanicus. He doesn't kind of know you in a sense, and he doesn't know how to tamper with you or block your abilities per se. So he just, well, threw some light decorations around you, <laughs> more or less. See, Mr. GR, I think it makes him look happier, which is really needed many times because he's kind of, you know, bleh looking. So the lights are nice. I like it. He just I'm not sure what you mean by uh, looking. He does not register in my memory. Memory, memory banks, maybe that word? Yes. <laughs> and he just uh, more or less stands next to Jai and, and looks at Pascal and tries to motion the, the sides of the cheek. Yeah, good. He turns around, grabs a Christmas-y looking hat, some white fur around it, a big red top going off from it. And uh, he wants to give it to Ulfar, but he gives it to one of his goons, taking that hand and placing up on Ulfar. Ulfar, you are a space marine. You are feeling nearly never tired. You know of your strength. You always have this inner power. But for some reason, as this thing is placed upon your head, you feel like your knees are aching like your joints are aching you feel like your body feels old and uh, you hear a little bit of a wiring and, and emanating inside of your head going on as said just precautions uh, i know you can just snip like this and and uh, well destroy everything i have here this is just for me that you don't do anything stupid Oh, my head. The note attached to this. What did... There's a paper crown? And this note says... What do you get when you cross a snowman with a blood angel? Frostbite? What is the meaning of the Xenos? Riddles. Well, <laughs> you will hopefully not find out, and you're done by the task by the time you do. And with that, he crawls by everybody's person. He feels very confident in a sense that now he's tampering with everybody's abilities and has a little bit of more self-consciousness among these great individuals. And he stops in front of Iliad and pulls out a huge device that as he pulls it out of the wrappings, it has the same color as the wrappings and... Uh, is in red, purple-ish, and white and greenish decoration. 
And you remember this kind of weaponry because you've trained as a ranger of the Aldari with these weapons. It's an Aldari sniper rifle. And it has a little note to it attached. Do you I want... beg your pardon. I was meditating, but I am coming back to our world now and I will do whatever I have in my power to be a good companion to you all. So, I beg your pardon, but what what am I looking at? This looks familiar. It is an uh, sniper rifle that you're especially uh, rangers of your kind, well, kind of my kind, yeah, uh, your kind are, are using. And has a little oh notes at God, the yes. weapon stock attached to it. Amazing. Sorry, I was out of it for a second, but yes, I remember it now. Oh, this brings me back to my home world, which makes me both sad and joyful. But, oh yes, this note. On what the does note, it say? You see it saying... Toot to shoot. Toot to shoot. <laughs> Toot! You try I would it? like to shoot. Well, maybe something merrier. And, uh... Maria. You'll figure it out. And with that, he goes back into his office, sitting down, putting his legs on the table crossed, pushing his little name placket of Mr. GR a little bit forward. And, and he yells and you hear a grumpy, grumpy sounding man from the outside. Mm. Stomping in, you see an, he looks like an officer of the Imperium, has some sort of Imperial patches on his uh, military style looking. Got another job for me. Uh, yeah. These fine individuals, uh, friends of our former friend that has been here, that wanted to trade, that didn't trade, that maybe traded, is now uh, helping us, and you go with him. Uh, no, they go with you. You bring them up to the last location where we found uh, the, the shipment might come in, yeah? Mm, follow me, everybody. And with that, he just turns around and, and leaves the, the place. Do you want to... Say something to Mr. GR. Do you want to interact with something? Do you want to huddle up in, <laughs> in the so-called fake bar where all the automatrons are meeting up to... Go to the tavern! And talk something. Yes. <laughs> Here, unless I noticed your gift was not operating at, at maximum efficiency. I believe you must invoke the right of rooting tooting Eldar shooting for it to be successful. <laughs> That sounds about right, yes. I will insist you with such festive endeavors. Wonderful. Well, Artentis oh. is kind of still just like sitting there, kind of just stewing and hatred and disgust. I just, just wish to point out that although it may be a thorn in his side, I would be happy to replace it with my axe in his head. Ulfar's already over by the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking over, seeing what they've got. You see some, uh, like, dusty uh, bottles of some sort of liquid in there. You uh, notice that this bar hasn't been operated since a long time. I'm going to walk over to where Ulfar is at the bar, and I'm going to lean it. Because you said when we came in, we perceived that there were, like, these, like, automatons at the bar, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just like some, some sort yeah, okay. of mannequins so, who are just doing the same motion all over and over again. Sure, sure. So, well... Ulf, Ulfar is looking for bottles and looking for something good. I'm going to bump elbow on one of the automaton and look over at him and be like, you know, I've been to some parties with some stiff company, but this really takes the cake. Am I right? Am I right, you tin can, you? It even put you to shame. I mean, come on now. It appears they have no strings to hold them down. Interesting. And as you are like elbowing him, you that motion lets him wobble a little bit left and right, and one of the uh, jaws unhinges and is like now hanging down, and is like looking very bizarre of the jaw trying to mimic the motion of drinking, and it's it's kind of like hanging to the side, and, and his mouth is like weirdly closing up and down while he's doing with the bottle. Mm. Ascal, is this one of your cousins by chance? No. My cousins would be far more optimized and would not be in the state of decay. Oh, you say, but you know, 
A lot of things can happen to a person in a long time if you're not keeping up. I mean, they kind of look like you, this one. I find in the eyes both and the jaw. Offensive and insulting if I could feel either of those emotions. <laughs> Uh, Argentus uh, discreetly trying to find a way to lick the chainsaw that she was given. <laughs> <laughs> that course of action is not recommended, although it might be delicious. Well, this is some sort of sacred right, sister. But <laughs> oh, yes. starts licking his axe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ritualistic cleaning of weapons as you tried before um like pulling the the little trigger that uh, chainsaw normally has to like start the motor of going and spinning before you do your swing you notice you you're clicking but nothing is really happening and, and doing but uh as you are giving your scent uh, well your gentle saliva over it all of a sudden it goes and it absorbs uh, all the liquids that it has on it, and as you click it again, you hear it and goes super up and starts at you. And uh, some weird devices going on, some little ball plinks, and you hear a uh, sound and a voice from outside uh, coming. Are uh, you guys coming? Hans speaking. Waiting outside. Please come in. Might I remind everybody that while we enjoy this ex mass festive cheer, our rogue trader is still strung up in shackles via the DVD video which we were shown earlier, which was not Pascal's doing. All right. Cassia oh, is correct. I would present in higher quality than DVD format. Thank you, esteemed Magos. Higher quality is indeed appreciated these days. Yes, the thought of the monkey in chains reminds me that I need to get back to the ship with him very soon. Pascal, why don't you, I don't know, install a screen in your belly, some sort of tubby <laughs> telly thing. <laughs> I think that would look would very find, nice on you. I have not found the <laughs> large enough screen at this time. The ones I have are too tinky winky. <laughs> <laughs> I have read in my books about these Teletubbies. They had a companion called Nunu who resided with them, along with a son with the face of a baby. That Is sounds this real? like it sucks. <laughs> I agree. It's Esteem very is weird well. mythology. I have not heard this one before. You must be careful with these strange tales. They could be heresy. Mm. Tubby custard Indeed. is the root of all heresy. <laughs> Indeed. Ulfar starts walking towards Hans. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Algeta is, is storming out alongside Ulfar. Trying Marriage to keep up and failing so Argenta timidly. Pascal is taking all spare robot parts for <laughs> further study. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Jai is gonna swipe one of the like dusty bottles to try to like experiment with her chalice. Oh, yeah. D did Ulfar find anything behind the counter? Uh, there is a bottle, a dusty, dusty bottle that has like four fingers of liquid still in there. Everything else looks very gonna, empty and robbed and, and like destroyed. I gotta pour half of it into my horn and half of it into Jay's goblet. As you throw it into Jay's goblet, you notice that it fills over and those runes react again. And again, it fills it up with this cinnamon, fruity, spicy smelling liquid. And it's kind of like counteracting whatever liquid you pushed into it and it's filled up to the brim. Ufar is now eyeing that goblet jealously. <laughs> I think I got the better deal out of this, you little tin can. All Let's I got go hang out with Hans. Lame hat. And you approach it. You, you look cute in it. I got lice. I got <laughs> lice. That don't, don't do anything apart from annoy me. As the merry think we're all leaving. <laughs> as the merry group goes uh, onwards, you can see as they're like going in one after another, and one of them seems to be like having uh, quite a party, rave party nearly. He's like blinking, emanating in all kinds of colors. And it's uh, your tech priest trying to not fall into attention, but uh, he's just like a bringing, beaming 
source of light with all kinds of colors, green, yellow, green, blue, and it's just like emanating in a pulse. Zoom, zoom. I see you've uh, made up your minds. Here's the ship, hop on board. Let's go before I, uh, and he rubs his uh, forehead. Get a headache working with this individual anymore. Please go inside, wrap your seal belts up. It will be a very short drive up to the last location where it was pinked. We shall see. The other side does not require seat belts. Uh, be my guest. And he walks past you into the cockpit in front again, kind of rubbing his forehead. Maybe he had drunk something, maybe has just headache. You don't know. He's just like all the time fuzzing around with his forehead rubbing a little bit, beeping around some attachments, and as everybody is, is everybody in? Or somebody wants to do something else? I'm good. Well, no, I'm in. in. All in. All far is gonna stand the back of the loader. The backside of the dropship is closed, and with one pull, is uh, driving up that ship to the sky, going through the atmosphere and all of a sudden this kind of rattling experience that you have before exiting the atmosphere stops in that moment and everything feels easy and fluent and like you are on water sliding through the stars he comes uh, past some asteroids you're now seeing the planets if uh, anybody wants, wants to watch out of the window you see the big kind of rocky-ish looking planet with some little spots of light emanating where the uh, first beginning cities or, or forges are being placed for manufacturing ammunition and all kinds of war machines the Empire has need of. And as you're passing those asteroids, soon in front of you and fate that seems to be small at first becomes larger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you just cannot make out the beginning and the end of it. And uh, please make everybody an another perception check for me. And while the others are rolling, thank you everybody for supporting the kids he needs with Make-A-Wish. Every hundred mark we do, we're gonna hang one more of these Christmas baubles into the storyteller's beard while you are going at it. So. Let's see, what does the rules have in store for us? Elliot, you noticed this kind of uh, shipment, this kind of technology. And with Pascal's aid and scan, you both agree. It is an Goliath ship of the Adeptus Explorators. You have uh, both encountered such a vessel before in your lifespan. And uh, you know that these ships are normally operated by the Adeptus Mechanicus, the cults of the machine, and uh, as you approach it, a dread feeling comes over Pascal, as he noticed and feels that the spirits of the machine of your ship are going kind of wild. There's a lot of beeping happening, a lot of blinking up. Pascal, if you want to, you can connect with the spirit of the machine there. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Um, as you connect with it, please roll me an uh, willpower check to see if your mind is stronger than what is happening within the ship's consciousness right now. And uh, yes, it is. You notice that the machine tries in some sort to shut itself down as it would be sentient, as it's like being afraid of something closing into this huge <laughs> to this huge strange, very strange. strange that's a fascinating sound it, it is. is let, let me, me try something, something else. else it didn't work okay the captain is really struggling to to keep on course do you want to aid him in terms of like recalibrating the ship's computers or something like that yes it is Technology both insults and incites my anger, if I had such a thing. I will attempt to do the right, but I'll mess it up. That's the PG version I'm going with. Fantastic. And with that, you're connecting and, and kind of like beeping, screeching, binary screech comes out from you, connecting with the spirit of machine and recalibrating. And Hans looks at you again, rubbing his forehead. Uh, 
Thank you, priest of the Omni Messiah. I uh, thought this might be troublesome, but apparently it is not bad to have in, well, support of your technology. Just, Just understand, understand that I'm better than you. That's, that's the lesson here. here. Well, fair enough, fair enough. And as he wants to turn around, the Vox cast blinks up and a message being translated through it. Unidentified vessel. This is Mago Santa One of Exploratory Fleet KX557 V. Cease your approach immediately. Trespass in this holy space invokes the wrath of the Omnissiah. Turn back now or face lethal consequences. Praise be to the Omnissiah, whose judgment is swift and absolute. And with that, Hans wants to pull away from the vessel, being in fear of shutting down and, and shell hits the wing of the of your ship you feel a subtle as everybody who's strapped in getting thrown up in, into your into your securities and the ship is getting tilted hans is quickly pulling levers left and right and managed to calibrate somewhat the trajectory of the ship into an upright position as the second hit comes in shooting off another part of the wing and you just see yourself drop. But for some odd reason, apparently the gods are with you or this might be intended. You pass an shield barrier and land hard on a surface, sliding into a very dark husk-ish looking room. And with that, we also hop over to our battle scene that we have prepared for you guys and everybody else. And we have survived this crash, and I will tell you why. Because I do not believe in the one that the Magos is called Santa, for he is not real. And with that, your vessel is stopping. I did it. I... Uh, and you, Pascal sees Sam, uh, Hans standing up, turning around. Again, rubbing his head aching, but it sounds kind of flashy and it makes a squeaky sound as he wants to wrap his head. And at that moment, he just thump, holds us on his knees, on his belly. And you notice that in the front of the cockpit, some debris came through the window and just completely sliced his forehead in half. And uh, with that, Walk it off, buddy. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. And with that, you are being in your ship. The doors behind you kind of broken open from your ship. You make your way outside. Everything looks very dark. You see a red emanating kind of lights of emergency lights going on. And with that, I'll give you the moment to walk around like five to six spaces in whatever direction you feel like going out to explore a little bit the world around you. I'm gonna go the opposite direction as the Xenos. Uh, immediately <laughs> going and checking it out. Very nice. I uh, recommend you to click on your character and use the uh, arrow keys to walk around. It will be way easier than dragging for you. So, with that... Well, everyone uh, goes uh, to walk around. Can Jai stay back and like sniff and try to figure out if this thing that this cup is filled with seems like poisonous or 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 poor on my health. Is there some sort of like they, they, they're checking out? I, I'm I'm not good at the front lines, anyways. I'll stick back and make sure I'm not gonna guzzle poison. Okay, are you like <laughs> nipping on it, or are you just trying to to sniff on it? You know, as somebody who has run around with some unsavory characters, maybe between like scent and like rubbing the viscosity between my fingers and sort of just like. You know, lightly, you know, using any sense that I can to determine if I get any poison out of it. Don't okay. mull on it too long, though. Uh, please give me a perception check for that to see if you're like you perceiving got... anything uh, weirdly from there. Mm hmm. 45. Perfect. You are sniffing at it, and uh, all you can smell is this sweet scent of cinnamon. 
and fruity berry scent and a little bit of alcohol on top. It seems to be okay. Right. Jai's gonna down the whole thing and then sh uh, shout out to her companions. What do you see out there, guys? Anything scary or interesting or cool? Well, I can't seem to move, actually. I just pause this for a moment you can so help we, we can uh, catch up. Who far is upside down now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we just pause for, for a quick second to, to see where, where you guys move to, to catch up. As you can, as you drink this down and you zip on it, you feel mm. youth going through your veins. You feel rejuvenated. You feel agitated. Adrenaline is popping up. Your heart is racing. And you have the feeling like you could rip out trees. <laughs> Move over, like over. Very, very strong <laughs> boost of uh, that. As uh, Pascal is moving forward, you are noticing another already, a lot of other crashed ships up here. Could it be that Mr. GR was sending here more people? Maybe he knew what's going on here. Uh, it looks the same kind of module that you had in the background, but something is festering over it. It gives like a slight yellowish glow as you are moving forward to your uh, front nose following you, your lights emitting from you, seeing that little glowy yellowish, nearly like shroomish looking thing growing on top of the spaceship in front of you. Mm, that looks bad. Do you want to investigate it? Do you want to? Yes. Yes. Okay, so as you are reaching to the space vessel, you notice that there are some sort of uh, cocoonish wrapped up bodies around the seem to, if you stare at it, wiggle a little bit and everybody who's standing super close to the vessel, that means Ulfar, Cassia, Pascal and Marazai, please make me an toughness check. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> through just the 100s. One. Through <laughs> one. <laughs> Shall I do that again? <laughs> no, or it's better, right? <laughs> one is perfect. Cassia, oh, yeah. <laughs> you are feeling a sense of greenish canvas coming from this. Your senses are dense because of your candy cane that you're holding. And uh, in that instance, as others want to approach it, you're holding, especially Ulfar standing next to you, the cane in front of him and just stop everybody. Going towards it feels dangerous to you. Do not stand any closer, friends. I sense a yellow greenish hue emanating from these fungus. Does anybody have any idea what this could be? Do we need to roll for that? <laughs> that depends if you want to like analyze it or I, have a look at it. I want to have a look. Okay. So far knows in general, I try to avoid funguses of all kinds. Perfect. I you do not blame you. Remember this. You have thought this. You have perched this. It is the odor of a foul, stinking being that you know from the warp. And you know that it is not right to mingle among those plants. Everything plastered around here, every smell around here smells and reeks of Papa Nurgle. And with that... We should not be here. As you see those words, we should not be here, that wiggling thing next to Pascal all of a sudden pops open. The wiggling thing next to Marazai pops open. And also some notions of movement is happening in the dark behind the space ship itself. Arteta readies the chain sword. So I'll just drag out your friends from up top down here. So we're all together. Oh, sprinting and <laughs> cinnamon fruit drink, just sloshing out of the cup, <laughs> just excited like, oh, there's something happening now. I'm sorry, guys. I'm here. I'm here. What is this? And as they open you and, and stink of rotting flesh is coming to your nostrils and a creature that kind of looks humanoid and half machine is crawling out of that cocoonish thing, grabbing at Pascal's feet. And in that moment, we are going into combat and we are uh, quickly having an initiative roll for everybody. Uh, this looks like no fun, guys. 
So on top, <coughs> there are the <coughs> pictures appearing. You just click on your picture for the role on initiative, and then it will uh, see whose turn is when. And as soon as everybody has rolled, you can click on begin combat, and it will show us the order of this. Love this tool. Can highly recommend it for people who are playing online with others roleplay adventures. First up is Ulfar. Them. You see Pascal being grabbed by an foul stinking creatures. What do you do? I'm going to grab Pascal and swap places with him. <laughs> uh, move him behind me and stand in front. Pascal, Pascal do you let hubbies. this happen? Yes, yes Pascal, Pascal wants hubbies. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, my darling little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pascal, please make me an agility check as uh, Ulfar, without any tr struggle, just grabs you from one side to the other. And you are... It's his little pocket mechanicus. <laughs> You're very slippery uh, in that term and uh, can wiggle out of the grip of that foul, stinking creature as it fops in front of you to the ground. Jai, what are you doing? Ooh, um, so Jai is very, um, drinking this makes me feel like very, like, adrenaline rushy, yeah? Yeah, you are now full um, adrenaline right now. Right, so acting a little out of character, I think she's going to rush forward and try to, um, like, wrestle, strangle one of these things directly. Okay, so you want to Just grab it. Just hop and... up on cinnamon juice. Yeah, yeah, gonna try to grapple. Ill-advised. But, you know, feeling like I could take on anything full of cinnamon juice. Perfect. The first target in front of you is the run right next to Ulfar being there on uh, a swapping position with Pascal, pulling him like a pocket, uh, Adaptus Mechanicus, putting him on the side. And uh, as you grab him, please mm -hmm. make me a strength check to see if you succeed in holding it down. And with that, no ease, 17. you just put your foot on his neck, holding it on the ground while he's like <laughs> trying to wiggle out of your uh, pretty strong boots that you push him down. Up next, we've got Ilith. Normally, I would analyze every single possibility for the best possible outcome, but the stench from this is just unbearable. So if possible, I would just want to blow it to bits. That is definitely possible. Please make me an... Do you just shoot at the target next to Ulfar? Yes, correct. Please make me an ballistics check. <laughs> just throw me an uh, D100 and we're going to have a look at your ballistics. Oh, thank 92. God. 92. <laughs> 92. That doesn't sound good. Well, uh, please roll me a D12 to see in which direction the shot goes. D12. We need to make a dexterity saving throw here. We shall see. One. We shall see. One. Well, you are lucky. You aim. <laughs> <laughs> you, you aim at it. And you want to pull the trigger. But you noticed there, you, you just cannot pull it. In that moment, the node bingles in front of you. Toot mm. to shoot. <laughs> Two to shoot, what could it mean? Does anyone have any ideas? I've already told you about the Eldar right of rooting to shooting. <laughs> and yes, that... but I am a little oblivious. You must make a musical note in order to lay oblivion upon the heretic. A musical note? I can do that. Anything in particular? Yes, free bird, please. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Reroll. <laughs> Let's do another one. <laughs> With that, a little. The no. Teletubby theme. Cool. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we should do Christmas related songs. <laughs> it's monkey festivity. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. And while right. Jai and you guys are discussing this, Jai is trying to hold down that little creature. But it seems to. Am I going Man to do this all by myself? <laughs> I'm going please. to try to see if this works. A slaying song seems acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> managed to, to, to creep out of the little... Christmas tree. <laughs> Have <laughs> a happy holiday. As you do that, you notice <laughs> all of a sudden, as you look at your weapon and inspect it, 
a shot gets loose. <gasps> it worked? It seems so. It seems so. I invoke the right of Mariah Carey. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is to purge the heretics. I hate Mariah. You keep her name out of your mouth, Xenos. Sister Argenta. <laughs> Maybe I need strength from all of you with this Christmas chanting, especially Argenta. Ooh. Nurgle tokens. <sighs> if so, I must, I will. Up next is our Nurgle guy <laughs> under the boot of Ajay. He's trying to wiggling out. He pretty much manages to push him up for a quick moment before Jaya's boot plunges him down back on the concrete metal mix below him. But he, the foot of yours is sliding off from his neck that put him down in position. Down his spine and something cracks there from your weight and you push your feet through his body and you just see his torso kind of inflate and crack. And while he's eagerly trying to pull him forward, your boot holds him so strong in place that he just <laughs> rips a pod as the back part and the legs are under your foot, but his upper body is crawling up to Ulfar and is now kind of like on knee size of him, really trying to pull up on his leg. Up next is Marazai. Um, Marazai screams oh thank goodness i was starting to get very bored <laughs> uh charges headlong at the nearest nurgle and tries to run him through with his sword perfectly give me an weapon skill nurgle in front of you is kind of like crawling in front of you out of the cocoon he's very very vulnerable yep. and with one wonderful strike very precise and swift for a second, it seems like nothing happened, but then the head slides off the neck and falls to the ground, and the whole body just collapses and is exquisite. Gone. So up next we have Argenta. All right, Argenta would like to. Uh, uh, what's the movement limit? Um, three between three and six spaces. Okay, because I would like to run up and slice at this guy right that's here. perfectly doable okay let us do that i'm going to oop, 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 oop. can i hit him from here yes you can okay i would like to slice please good dan please give me an weapon skill are you like attacking with your sword or are you shooting it uh i'm attacking with this strange sword mostly because i want to see what it does okay Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is it just D100 again? Exactly. All the checks are just D100s. Okay. If only cool. Only just make it sure. Extra. Perfect. And a 67. Dear Agenda, <laughs> you are grabbing your newly swords. For some reason, your grip is not so good with it yet. And it kind of feels sticky. And you feel distracted by that. And you just widely swing over it, being a little bit distracted to not hit Ulfar as it's now crawling up on his leg and you stop your hit from going through. Up next we have uh, another Nurgling jumping down from the wing of the ship going up to Marajai and trying to bite him in the neck while he's at it fighting with his colleague. Let's see if he succeeds with that as Marajai cleans the dirty, stinking blood of his blade, you feel a sharp, sinking pain in your shoulder. And as you look to the side, you see a half-decomposed face and some lips that are still resembling of lips there, but you can see his grinny teeth going into your shoulder and biting harshly on your armor plates. Luckily, you are pretty armored, but you, you feel the teeth and the pressure on your shoulder from that foul nesting creature. Cassia is up next. 
Well, Cassia has been pretty overwhelmed by the whole experience, so she's been cowering behind Ulfa, but in a moment of bravery, she wants to step forward and try to strike with her third eye. Can we try to do that? Oh, yes, we can totally try to do that. You are third eyeing the creature that is hanging on Ulfa? Yes. Good. Make me please an intelligence check, and Ulfa, please make me a willpower check. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Cassie, please give me another roll. That was just a uh, plus one. One D100 we need. That's there we the... go. Sorry, it keeps going the wrong one. <laughs> there we go. That's the right one. <laughs> All good. Ooh, oh. Good rolls. Good rolls. You're opening your lids, and normally you know that whenever you are fully opening that third eye, everything in front of you shrieks in pain and terror and has to fight with the warp, fight with all kinds of demons trying to zip through as you unveil the veil between the material and the immaterial world. Luckily, Ulfar willpower is strong enough to maintain his sanity while you're doing this. He's really fighting. You can see his tin breathing there, but that little creature on his neck just goes completely limp and falls to the ground. Ah, I thank you, Navigator, <laughs> but please don't look at me again. I apologize. I... Up next but I'm also not that sorry because it saved you. So. <laughs> <laughs> also, I heard something in the warp. Our next is uh, Pascal. It is your turn. You've seen your companions slew down one of those pesky, stinking creatures, and you hear, well, Marajai kind of grunting in pain or excitement. Both. Both. <laughs> yes. Yes. Both. Um, so, so the one up here is dead, dead correct? correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what does he have? We have only over here one more. Down to okay, the where, sorry. Down to the yeah, south. Next I'm to the doing filthy south. Oh, down here. I'm gonna head down that way if I can. You can nearly reach him around that area. You are out of your movements. Um. You are having a sight gun and a plasma pistol. Yeah, let's, let's use the plasma pistol. That sounds good. Are you shooting at the uh, creature in front of uh, Marzai? <laughs> They're both Xenos, it matters not to me. <laughs> but yes. They will. You are She's muted, here. by the way, if you, uh, for the reaction oh. you did before. No, no, you're good. You're good. It was just okay. uh, Marzai. Good. Give me an ballistics throw, please. So we have an 60. You are loading up your gun. Please roll me a d12 to see in which direction it flies. Four. Your sidearm, your mechanical sidearm is coming out and with a nice loading sound, it shoots past Mara's eyes, a right ear and hitting something in the wall up there, making a little blue, blue sign. Up next, we got Ulfar. Can Ulfar see over the wreckage? You could see maybe under it if you belly drop, but it's like in your way. You just saw Pascal moving us uh, to the side and just wildly shooting a plasma shot into the unknown okay. all right so I, I don't know that okay i'm gonna i'm gonna just follow pascal how, how far am i able to get around there to uh you should be around uh pascal's area to be able to go there or if you want to you can try to jump through that shroom thing Ooh, on a straight oh, way oh we are we are jumping of course we're jumping come okay. on <laughs> Make are you like uh trying to use your strength jump uh, through the, um, to jump dead, you're trying to like find uh, surfaces to agilely go over it. 
Like, do you kind no, of? No, we're. Like... Mm, mm. Well, it, here's here's the thing. Can I can I see at least the top of the of the wreckage? Like you from can his definitely eyesight. see the top of the wreckage, and you see some nice okay. shrooms growing up. They're emitting some yellowish kind of color. I'm gonna I'm gonna move one space to the right, and I'm gonna pick up Jay so that she can see over it. Okay. And I offer to Please. give him some of my yeah. cinnamon sweet juice. Yeah, exactly. I, I take her goblet with one hand and lift her up with the other. <laughs> <laughs> no, just slap your hand. No, no touching. No touching. No, I will give. Open your mouth. I do not touch you. No, do oh, not no, touch no, this. No, open give, your give, mouth. Give it. Give it. I will hold. You. Sharing is caring. I do not touch you, Tin Man. Open do your do mouth. Not I worry, Jay. Out, and then you throw me over. I feel no. so strong right now. Just let me pour. I make you strong. Longer. Come on, open uh, your mouth. Come on. Go, go on then. Go on. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, pour cinnamon juice in his mouth. <laughs> in a nice gulp, the sweet cinnamon liquids coming out of that cup. So, up next, we have Jay, who's uplifted. You see past those both shrooms. You kind of can make out nicely uh silhouettes, and in kind of greenish, disgusting looking head is bits into his shoulder plate. Uh, could I either shoot over where I can see with my pistol or like launch myself off of the shoulders of Ulfar that I'm like on right now? You can totally do both in once if you want to. Try to like uh, leap forward. Yeah. I want to I want to leap forward while trying to shoot him. Just just like high on cinnamon juice. <laughs> high on cinnamon juice. So you drank that uh, prior getting out of there. You now standing up on Ulfar's shoulder. And uh, mm -hmm. Ulfar, do you like help her in in like oh, jumping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Shall, shall I roll? Uh you're okay. <laughs> she will roll with a normal roll. Go me for uh, athletics, please. Mhm. Mm uh, 39. 39. Perfect. You are, without a doubt, being acrobatically pushed and thrown. It looks like a nearly like cheerleader move. You move up, Ulfar grabs your legs and really gives you a lift. You make a nice front flip and mid-air you're aiming from top down, but something feels off as you drank that nice cinnamon juice. Mid here, oh no, all of a sudden, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> and in a burst of cinnamon smelling liquid comes out of your mouth, vomiting all over that spaceship and Marazai and that creature. Kindly, nearly good enough landing next to them and uh, kind of trying to. Catch your your wits, catch what what happened. You feel super sick, but you've made it over the ship without landing in the spores. I am very sorry, Marjai, but I oh, hold on. <clears throat> Elliot. Yes. It is up to you. I have. I have walked over to the other side, to Xenos' side, and are there any companions that I could try to help out? Uh, the only companion that needs help uh, seems to be Jai, who's vomiting all over the place, and uh, Marajai, who's having a decomposed foul head in his shoulder, munching on his plate. Hmm. Maybe I could offer Jai a meditation session to help her recover. Okay, you want to like dabble into your uh, psychic powers of the Eldari? and uh, help her yes. calm down the system. That's actually yes. a good idea, because otherwise uh, our poor Jai would be struggling some more. <laughs> You're <interested laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> please throw me in willpower uh, and fellowship check, actually. 37. Perfectly. Your smoothing voices and meditating session, let's call it like that, while in midst of battle is calming her down. Her guts are not pulsating in anymore in, an, in a whiff of a second. All that pain in your guts that pushed up whatever liquid was in, in your body stopped. Nice move. I'm just, you know, the screams of Marjai with the weird zombie head just are like a music to me while I go into the meditative state. It's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> and that, 
<laughs> Marjai. He's been <laughs> still munched on his shoulder. <laughs> Anything. Is that all you can do? And I grab its head <laughs> and slam it down in front of me. Please make me an strength check. Fantastic. And with that, you are grabbing it without any struggle by his neck. And it looks like nearly a dance, like you're trying to woo somebody in a close upward dance going into your knees and slamming him over your shoulder into the ground and with a nice Hercules, Hercules, Hercules with a nice crack <laughs> his head is open on the floors and with that you have How did you know my middle name? Excellent With that you have uh, managed to hold your ground you against his treasures and you have uh, somewhat of free roam from now here. You see down the roads another spaceship that has been rammed into the debris. You see some red lights emanating uh, down the whole way. Somewhat like a leading beam. Pascal, please make me an perception, no, an intelligence check. As an Adeptus Mechanicus, you know that these lights normally go off when there is no electricity when the generator is down and those lights normally lead you towards the generator that needs reactivation. Pascal, are we going the right way? <laughs> yes, these are emergency backup lights. I, I can't hear you. Why don't speak, you hear me? Speak a bit louder. I'm really far away. Pascal. I said, I said. <laughs> I'm going to use the PA system. I'm over here, follow the lights, you giant, giant, hairy man. What did you just say to me? <laughs> I'm coming back here! <laughs> so, for a um, quote moment, Marjai has found a somewhat odd-looking corridor. Uh, the doors up there where you are seem to be scratched on the outside. And there are two devices set in front of it that are apparently emanating a slight green light. You could, if you want to, interact with those lights, uh, with those screens. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I no. smash, the, smash the control panel. You smash the control <laughs> panel. Well done. Yes. Please I hate you so much. much. Please roll me a D100 <laughs> so we can determine what happens. Pascal just goes, ah. Oh. If it's above 50, it goes open. Which one of those are you smashing? Uh, the top one. The top one. Okay. While you're standing there and smashing the top one, some slight electrical sound goes up. And uh, you hear the hinges unlock. And apparently the door is now open. If you want to you can open the door it's not a must though yes the door is i will open the door and walk in okay feel free to click on the door and walk in and as the door Ooh, goes, this party as the door goes open all of the other groups hear a loud kind of <laughs> sound going on and it echoes like multiple voices going in with the same same sounds and uh seems like marajai has opened a door and some sort of holding cell where they kept people who came over in the landing bay for probably controlling them or securing them and f for some god's reason these people look like they have been forgotten in here they're rotten they're all kinds of Pesticles and disgusting grows out of them and uh, have an odor I, of uh, rot and flesh. I beg, I beg your pardon. Testicles? Yes, yes I do have, have the question about the testicles. Oh, <laughs> <Testicles. laughs> uh, uh, far, immediately, it's just, like, oh. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I have some strange feeling. I must go back. <laughs> now it is up to you, Mirajai, if you want to encounter this if you want to leg it back to your group what do you want to do 
Fight the testicle um, monster. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, uh, Marajai screams at the top of his voice, I am the Reaming Tempest Incarnate! And then charges at <laughs> the entire group. You charge at the entire group with no reason. You are doing that, so with advantage, please give me an strength check. Fifteen, and with a successful charge, you are putting your your swords, as you have been learned in the ways of the Drukhari, on your shoulder blades, as your shoulder pad has little little spike going up, and lock in there with your blades, charging forward, pushing you through the mass left and right, and you know that this technique has been used by your assassins to break up open ranks of multiple people and you stop as you end being in front of the wall and as you look back a whole line in the middle lies sliced up and dead on the ground what do the others do in the meantime as you hear them shout out Ulf from the ulfar hears the sound of battle knowing something's going on behind them is going to say to Pascal, Pascal, get the generator running! I'm going to just start booking it towards the sound of battle. Yeah, Argent is going to follow because there's no way she's missing out on a good time. <laughs> no, I'm going then. to reboot the generator. Argenta and uh, Ulfar, please move up to the holding cells where you heard the sounds. What do the others do? Cassia, Jay? Cassia follows Ulfar and Argenta because she knows they're the strongest and she is quite delicate. Ilyath and uh, I think I think Jai is still by the, the, the mushroom thing. Really queasy, still feeling a little bit better, but really... <laughs> Just it. Uh, I mean, it's in the throat still, and it doesn't feel good. I mean, keeping keeping eyes and ears on people running around, but a little bit lost and a little bit out of it, to be honest. And Iliad, like the true ranger she is, she keeps a distance, um, but tries to help from a distance. I don't know where everyone is, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> where is everyone? <laughs> it's dark. <laughs> The game We're is up here. Follow the sound of my voice. Go up. <laughs> North. I'm coming. I cannot unlock Error. the door. Keep talking, <laughs> colliding. Yes, guide us. One whole... Okay. One second. Ilya, if you want to go up to the others. Yeah, it says token collide, but maybe I just have to... Yeah, I keep getting walk token around. collide. <laughs> All by myself. Going towards the generator. Keep going up. How are you through the door? It's not letting me. Oh yeah, it's uh, yes. stopped on on purpose right. so we can uh, wait for the others to catch up. But what if I want to do the generator now? It's Christmas. We gonna hop on that in a moment <laughs> in in a second. Oh, I made it. Very good. Oh, hello, Elliot. It's nice to see you here. Hello, everyone. I was afraid Good. you were lost. As you arrive, dear, uh, Ilyath, what do you do? Popping up over the corner, seeing them, looking at a holding cell with tons and tons of apparently dropped and some still walking corpses, you could nearly say. You see Marajai at the end of the room, kind of not really breathing of effort. He's just filled with dark, stinking Elevating. blood and guts. Well, what the hell happened here? <laughs> it seems like an um, <laughs> investigating cell that they used for putting people in there while they were, you know, being investigated. <laughs> this is Maybe nice they drink well. too much of and this. One, how many steps there are? one <laughs> two... <laughs> Well, are, I think it should be purged either way. Are are these nerglings chained up? Like, are they, or are no. they in tubes? Or no, they are just uh, the as oh, the so door went open, all the kind of like remnant bodies there went animate and went up and reacted to the smell of fresh life and flesh, and uh, were crawling and walking towards Marajai. Ulfar, please do not king shame the nerglings. Xenos, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Have you made some friends? You could say that, yes. <laughs> oh, Great, dear. so we can kill them. It's, it sounds like it. <laughs> I think we're getting ready to insane? fight. You definitely can can kill them. Uh, we're not going to roll for the initiative. I'll just let you go uh, one by one. And uh, let's have a look what Iliath has and want to do as she pops up there. Well, what it seems I know way? I'm a little bit sick and not involved, but it seems a little messed up just to, you know, shoot fish in a barrel like this. But you guys, hold on. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> do you need another meditation? Please. Be okay. I just I can't tell if drinking more is going to make it better. It might, mm. but I just I need a minute. Hold on. Yeah, Maybe I always you find you, it helps. You should <laughs> try to guys behind the door. Yeah, better out than in. You sh <laughs> oh, okay. Please well, you shoot no. the guys behind the door that can't defend themselves. Good luck. Oh god. These are no longer people. They are suffering. Yes. Yeah, so let's um, put them out of their misery. Well then, are you taking a shot at the first targets? Yes. Perfect. Give me an I'll make my gun go boom. shot. Are you doing something while you are pulling the trigger? Ooh. Well, I have to uh, make it work, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a lot for Christmas. We said no DCMA. We just said that. We just said that. <laughs> That, Is there anything I can sing? <laughs> you can sing. You can sing anything. Uh, with that, the shot goes loose. Please throw me an D12 as you rolled a 91. Bam. 12. D12. 12. You aim at the first target that you see there. Your shot goes far above them, bounces off from that holding cell structure. Apparently the walls are made from some sort of metal that reflects everything that is thrown at them, some sort of like security system. So people that are in there cannot go out or break out with what kind of weaponry ever. And it just goes in a shooting left and right as your shot goes off and uh, takes out one, two, three, four, targets and nearly breaks apart with the plasma shot in front of Argenta's feet. And with that, Argenta, you just had Not a plasma bad shot coming Zenos. in front of you to the ground. <laughs> yeah, typical. Um, <laughs> Argenta um, gives uh, Iliad just like a dirty look. Uh, and then tries to make this weird chainsword work. <laughs> uh, and she takes a swipe at one of these. Perfect. Give me, please, an weapons check. There we go. Very good. And as you know what to do, you're now doing it, and the motor starts going, and with a very very satisfying, disgustingly sounding. You chop through the first body without any ease, hitting into the second one and with a nice cleave. You're having both decapitated. Hmm. Is it minty? <laughs> no, it stinks of rot and uh, decomposing oh. flesh. That's okay. That's okay. And, I and mint. <laughs> <laughs> and for some odd reason, as you are carving through those entities left and right, the last corpses seem to collapse as whatever evil presence was in this room has left it. I could see, um, I could see Marza running past there. I'm gonna grab him before he can make it to the other door. <laughs> Do you? Interact with that? Do you allow it? Do you let yourself grab? Do you try to, to dodge that grab? Uh, I, I dodge. I, I dodge. You try to dodge? <laughs> Please give me and give me an yep. agility check and see if you can make that dodge. Sadly, Ulfar seems to be quicker than your yeah. sidestep and now has you in a firm grip. What do you, what do you want to see then? We are here to save our boss. Stop How do you know the monkey? How do you know the monkey isn't behind the other door? 
You know, you raise a good point, Zenos. However, <laughs> he's just he's so angry he can't get the words out. <laughs> if you want to, so you can give me on an your shoulder. Uh, intelligence throw to see if you can remember what Mr. GR told you guys. Okay. Ah. <laughs> And 59. What? We are here for the weapons, not people. You remember GR telling you that uh, he will send up your rogue trader with Hans when the mission is done and you box cast him? Does anybody remember where Pascal is? Didn't he oh, try me. and take care of the generator? Oh, shit. <laughs> is that a euphemism? Is that how he has fun? <laughs> While you were wondering... Why is it always euphemisms with you, Jai? You mystify me. I'm sorry, it's the only way you can survive all the deep dark horrors I've observed in this world, is to have a little fun lighting up Argenta. It's just a joke. Hmm. Maybe your jokes just aren't funny. And then she walks away. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, Jai, like, uh, looks down into the cinnamon right cup. And... I heard that over the box, and let me say, damn girl, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, ooh, Pascal seems to make a step towards your room as uh, you were, and uh, with a very proud looking standing, all you can see around you is. Uh, that apparently slowly the lights seem to go up everything becomes brighter you hear machines zoom zoom activating humming the air filter system goes on all those weird flying spores and and, and smells are being dragged and sucked into all kinds of holes around you and uh, and first what compared to the f previous smells kind of Fresh air. Seems like Pascal, in the absence, managed to not shut down the generator, but reboot it. And uh, the generator is on, and you have a green light towards the south door where you were potentially already passed, or some of you were walking towards to to the very south where uh, Marajai and Ulfar is uh, standing. Ah. We are moving uh, down Good job, now. machine brother. Well done, esteemed Magos. The stench of Jai's vomit was starting to become rather overwhelming. <laughs> You're not covered in it. <laughs> I am stuck. Mm-hmm. My token does not move. I appear to be stuck. <laughs> uh, you went on the elevated place. Let me drag you guys. Right oh, there. we have to take the stairs. Yep, yep. Oh. There's elevation. Oh. My robes are too it's... long for walking upstairs. <laughs> I'm lost. So it's so we... difficult being a psycho. Having to walk places. Having to walk. This is a job for the serfs. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the servants when Where's you need them? Where's my palanquin to be carried around in? This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and as you are approaching the door in front of you that has now been energized the closer you come to it the more of an kind of like equal sounding hum you hear that if you keep closer attention to how it sounds it sounds more and more like an rhythm and uh, all you can hear is an And it sounds like a metal hitting metal and then some hydraulics giving ease and uh, letting some air out. And with that, you are opening the door and entering the factory of this place. Debate. It is the rhythm of the night, clearly. <laughs> it sounds heretical. Sadly, for time reasons, we have to jump over <laughs> the generator room itself. I will show it uh, off it towards the end. Just know that I did great. And yeah, all these assets look perfect. amazing, by the way. You like them? Yeah, the artists of the assets mm. have done a fantastic mm. job. And uh, yeah, for everybody they look who's great. 
throwing 100 plus bucks at the kids with our charity are getting all these tokens and battle maps. <laughs> in, 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 in pennies. <laughs> just <throwing> 100. <laughs> yeah. Come here, child. I wish to bring you something at you. Wag bag full of pennies. Just, Not just the proof of this. <laughs> For charity! <laughs> <laughs> Yay. While everybody is right. loading in, you are presented with a lot of activity in here. There's like little machines running left and right with little forklifts, having all kinds of packages, big and small, with little ribbons on top. And there, there is so much activity buzzing around you and all kinds of machinery sound, especially towards the south of you. You hear heavy lifting noises uh kind of like f heavy metal thumping while towards the upper side of you you hear little tinkering and small kind of mechanizing sounds some drill here and there some saw sounds uh, some hammering uh air hammering of, of some uh, tool probably and here and then and kind of fiery sound uh, of an oven being open and you hear a little <laughs> come out of it where do you want to go which direction i would like to go past 99 percent. there we go it hurt me never mind <laughs> never mind i retract my statement for the reason of uh storytelling i will drag your minis a little bit around so let's just let you decide okay. in which direction you want to head first uh i'd say let's head south that's mm. where all the light is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Heading south. Follow the light. We have, I think uh, I'll be following Ulfa no matter where, so. Perfect. <laughs> Argenta and Marajai, may I ask that you move so that I can get out of this corner? <laughs> Thank move you so much. Arms. Do you need an arm to lean on? Yes, please. Oh, how kind of you, dear sister. I, do I believe Cassie is saying, move, get out the way, get well, out the way, get out the so way. Not so blunt terms, but yes. Artenta <laughs> <laughs> offers an arm for Cassia to use. Cassia takes her arm with a grateful glance. Well, and with that, you are seeing in some sort of like belt that drags items towards the end of it. You see a lot of servitors uh, working left and right. Uh, on what, what not machinery, and uh, as you enter the conveyor belt area, also, thump, 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 the lights seem to go on and be triggered probably by your motions, and uh, it should give you now a little bit of a better sight of uh, what is going on around there. I finally loaded in so I can move. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I see oh, a lot of I think we're just gonna... All of these servitors <laughs> are tinkering on things. They are preparing. There are some servitors who seem to be armed with heavy bolter guns on their shoulder. They seem kind of sleeping, not really acting to your motions. And uh, for those who are unfamiliar with servitors, they are lobotomized humans. They have a chip in their brain and they're programmed to do a certain thing. And they execute that thing without further ado. As Ulfar goes past the machinery and reaches a room, as you look in there, you see a guy holding up a symbol, pulling it down to himself and kind of whipping back and forth. And it looks very like a little ritual that he's doing. And every time he's pulling it from his chest, there's blood running down on him. And he's kind of like, nearly like he's celebrating uh. what's going on there while somebody in the background that he can barely, barely make sense of visually is, uh, he seems like he's pulling off an endless scroll of skin from his forearm and he's like writing weird runes on it. And every time he's done with a line, he again grabs it and pulls it off. And normally you would think, okay, there's like, it should rip off of his skin, but it's like a never ending pool of skin that he's just doing there while you were watching uh, him. He's totally not seeing you. They're not seeing you. They're like in some sort of like uh, heights of ritual doings of back and forth uh, repeating Pascal! Uh, 
Your people are very weird in their customs. What is do you this mean, my people? Well, I mean... You've made it awkward. I'm sorry for you. But oh. let me inspect what's up here. His Argenta. Is enough. It appears normal. Argenta! Yes? I think there may be heresy afoot. No doubt. We should we need you here. Purge no, Alpha, you are mistaken. He is peeling skin from his arm, not his foot. Uh. And as Marajai enters the room, it's like some bubble pops around them. They are getting a notion of their surroundings. Their ritual and secret room has been disturbed. And uh, that guy with the bloody hand and the skin pulling is turning around to Marajai, trying to nearly f like a fanatic leap at him while the guy with the statue just screaming, blood for the blood gods, and hops out of the window towards Pascal, trying to smack that bronze heavy idol into his head. Please, Pascal and Marjai, throw me in a jelly check. It's Kermit the blood god. <laughs> 26 and 39, you successfully managed to step aside and shrug off that charge towards you. And he just completely misses the leap on Pascal landing out of that window while the other one lands behind Marazai. We have Argenta. How do you react? Uh... As soon as I can move over there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Argenta is uh, thirsty for blood. Uh, and I think she goes after this one with the uh, chainsword again. She goes and attacks the servitor? <laughs> uh, is, is, wait, is the servitor... The guy on the right with the, the statue. The servitor is, is the in yellow, and the scout. guy on the right is the one with the statue that leaps on uh, one of you. This guy. Okay. Um, are the servitors doing this one? The the weird. Are they doing the ritual, or um, are they just? No, there? the servitors are just working, like okay, like then, normal servitors fine. on their on their. <laughs> that's fine. They don't. <laughs> they don't act to you. Um, but th is this the guy who's a problem up here? I don't know if you can see my ping. Yeah, there, there's one, and then mm. to your right is another one. To my right. He's having like an I idol see the in one hand. On the right. He's like Where's two squares right? away from you. Over here, a pin is going up. See the guy covered in blood? The one next to um, the one I'm putting my gun in his face. <laughs> over here? <laughs> uh, I can see it on the on the Twitch page. I can't see it in, in game. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Just fire your bolt in the chamber. But I, I will, you know, the Emperor will guide my shots. Um, exactly. I will fire my bolter at him. Um. <laughs> Very good. Give me a ballistics check for your uh, bolter pistol as you shoot it off. And with a very accurate 34. aim, the Emperor guides your harm, arm. You aim down the sights and with a loud. It goes straight between his eyes and that body thops to the ground, having that idol in front of him. So... Emperor be praised! Pascal, what do you do? Where's the other one? The other Can one I is up to Marajai, to the north-west of your position. As I watch the heretic die in front of me, I will go over there and into the room somehow you would not be able because it's like elevated it's you're like standing on the ah. other side there's like some windows going on okay uh, so I can't, I can't get up there am i am i able to lift him up you are totally yes, able to me. lift him up absolutely Toss me! Okay. Toss me! <laughs> give, Toss me, a, me. <laughs> give me a, a strength check. Eat me some help. Oh, that did two. Hold on. 
I love how much Ulfa is um, assisting. I'm j uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Devin. Do, do I push him through the window? <laughs> sweet. This is, this is the rocket in Groot you needed. <laughs> sweet, sweet strength oh, of the oh, space oh, wolf. Oh, Even throws you so hard that that room in front of you with the windows that we are looking through, you are getting tossed over it, but not too far to hit the roof, but you are definitely in midair hovering over the room below you. You see Marajai's swords reaching out of the door entrance and you see that little culprit trying to uh, push himself up after he missed his targets. Your midair, you can try to sunk down with your uh, two-handed power axe and hit him or you can try to shoot up your plasma rifle from up top or just try to land on him. Let's do plasma, that sounds fun. Okay, give me a ballistic shot. 12. Ooh. Ooh. If you aim at him, you feel that subtle vibration of uh, the plasma gun generator loading up. It emanates blue light around of your devices to track the heat of it. And with a nice, whew, the shoot goes off of your weapon, hitting the target right in his back. And what power and plasma weapons do very well they make atoms that are bound normally break their bonds and completely vaporize whatever they hit or cut through. And with that, you just stare down on him. And as he stands up and looks at you, you can straight up look through his upper body, seeing the concrete and design behind him as he then, of course, collapses as all his vital organs were being melted away. The Omnissiah condemns you. <laughs> and with a victory sound, some confetti is popping the left and right next to Pascal winning the battle. The servitors seem to not bother uh, about this little incident. They go on about their merry work, loading up what seems to be heavy, heavy containers of whatever contents it uh, may uphold and all goes towards the right and sides of you into a huge kind of loading bay where they just you know stack up and play tetris with the pieces coming in where do you want to go next or who takes the leads what happened to that idol that he was trying to beat us with the idol is What's on the, the ground, it's completely that? filled, uh, filled fit with, uh, with some uh, blood of uh, that skull that got popped from Argenta. You just um, a like, solid bronze. The thing type of thing that we see regularly, like a pretty normal, unremarkable thing. No we see this type. Definitely not. It is an artifact of the Chaos God, Korn, the Blood God, uh, and uh, they were holding some sort of ritual why heretics are on this vessel and are allowed to do this under an so-called magus of the adeptus mechanicus is um, unknown to this point yeah that that's filthy um hmm. heresy tech. There, is there is there like a way i can destroy it or attempt to destroy it uh, definitely, you could try to hold up an, uh, one of the many rites that you have learned in your school of Sororitas and just try to more or less disenchant it. It's a thing that uh, sometimes you do with Xenos tech, weaponry, uh, things of the chaos. You try to lower its warp energy. It's more like of an... Of yes. An, energy kind of thing that you're trying to damping from it uh in terms of destroying it per se you could uh i don't know grab uh, pascal's blaster gun or ulfar's uh blast pistol and just shoot at it with that and disintegrate it or conversely i could pick it up and keep it of course you could oh. are you, you are you picking it up that? and keeping it yes uh, i think i will Okay. For science. Uh, you just see as uh, artifacts. 
You just see as Pascal's uh, extra arm uh, from behind goes forward and uh, picks it up and stows it somehow behind his red rope and just more or less disappears from vision. Don't ask where I put it, but it's mine, mine, mine. <laughs> I know where you, well, not sleep, but go charge. to sleep. <laughs> yeah, charge. <laughs> Reboot. If it goes missing one day, there's no question what happened to it. And with Dad, <laughs> as you were uh, keep on keep on to, uh, bickering amongst each other, and just preparing something quickly. Absolutely. Oh, what will easy. you use Ready? it for, esteemed Magos? Uh, I'll tell you later, El Cassia Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I can't who is, wait. Who is this Elsie that you talk about? <laughs> I'm sorry, I I've had a small understand. operating system error. I meant oh. Cassia. Ah, oh, the chaos is starting name, already. Though. I'm sure she's the best person you've ever met. We should put him down. <laughs> we should. I think that would Jeez. help. <laughs> um, are you guys moving on? Why are you so mean to me? <laughs> like, is is everybody sticking around this corpse? Uh, you where are we going? Should be. Let me give him a check. Marzai is <laughs> exploring on his air. Uh, he's phone. he's <laughs> gone. <laughs> That's fine. I don't Typical. Care. Maybe you, we can leave him here. Just, Will, Will just wandered up. He's like, I'm gone. I'm out. Will <laughs> remain I, there, Will? I am bored of this. Yes. Ul Ulfar hmm? is waiting for people to leave. Are you <laughs> remaining I'll, up there? I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. Okay. Catch up uh, with you. Uh, Will, what do you see up there? Let me catch up really and uh, move the camera up to you. Is uh, you see an oddly highly decorated room. Uh, with some uh, servitor sentry people standing in front of you uh, that you passed, didn't react to you. And inside there is uh, an emanating star-looking shaped light source that seems to power this whole facility, in a sense, what's happening here. And it just lets a nice, bright emanating light into all directions somewhat like a disco ball but in the form of a of a star shaped it just reflects the energy into all sides and uh, as you are stepping in there you are hearing uh let me now move this back up as you have sneaked past without my notion <laughs> <laughs> and then i'll let you guys move again preparing this bup, bup. as i was saying the chaos is starting already i can hear your the, it, it's starting to infect into your various mechanicus parts <laughs> you disgusting tentacle man <laughs> <laughs> okay. as you move up top you hear and elderly sounding voice mixed with technology and and uh, tools to make him sound like he's speaking something you know that from one of your companions that you like or don't like uh pascal that it is an attack priest in there humming and screeching some sort of uh sounds that are at the beginning sound weirdly as it's connecting with uh, uh, some device and then you just hear an Yes, yes, I know of this one, I do. You've got mail. Aha, a clue. <laughs> and, Let us uh, investigate the strange sound. While I too want to find the source of this tune. I don't think we're hearing this. I think it's just Marzai. Yeah, I think so. That, that's totally <laughs> fine. Totally fine. While he's up there, uh, Marzai, be so kind as to not move to see if the others want to catch mm -hmm. up. Uh, you hear a very slightly subtle humming sound that started to come from the north that was not there yet. And you notice that Marzai is not there with you anymore.
Yeah. I seem to be stuck on top of this, you know, large piece of machinery. It's kind of complicated to get down from, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, once, Thank you, sir. Once everybody is out of line of sight, the cultist that's lying on the ground, Ofar is going to take a piece of their brain and eat it. Oh! Yeah. Do you mind elaborating why Can he's I? doing that? Can I roll the stealth real quick? <laughs> I mean, you would know why I'm doing this for a start. Oh no, I, just, I want to watch you and say, I know what you did. I saw what you did. So, for those that don't know, space marines have an organ implanted in their stomach that allows them to learn certain things from the corpses that they eat. Very so clever. He's going to he's going to eat part of this cultist brain. Mm. Do I need to roll anything? Lovely. No, that's that's he's totally up to, That is totally up to your abilities as a uh, space marine to do that. And uh, as you munch on it, you get flashes of uh, an oddly looking double the size of Pascal's uh, physical appearance. Adeptus Mechanicus in a red robe with some whitish fur around him. He has a huge sack on his backside that looks kind of greenish and all kinds of weaponry are reaching out of that that sack. And uh, he seems to talk to that person and uh, the, the Adeptus Mechanicus in your vision seems very pleased with what feels for you like yourself were talking to him as you're like going into the memory of that person seeing it from his eyes and you know first testicles now a sack <laughs> you know, the clues are coming together <laughs> you know definitely now that the magus up here uh has done something with heretics the adeptus macrampus oh no we must move quickly <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Be so kind as to move up to uh, near the room of uh, Marazai. Do not go up his platform. You can place yourself around the servitors uh, wherever you feel like it. As you move in, you see a conveyor belt filled with servitor workers building and constructing all kinds of weaponry as they are getting packed together into little boxes with ribbons on top that then gets shipped up to those little fork robots that are driving around, moving all the machinery uh, and and loot, so to say, towards that big room where you came from. Also, there's a little melting oven going on where they're throwing in scrap metal and whatnot to make uh, whatever tools and, and ingots they need for their manufacturing. And uh, Recycled. as you are close to Marajai, you just see Marajai disappear into the room where he was standing out there. Marajai, be so kind as to walk in there and uh, show the audience what is awaiting. I have no idea where he is. He's on the <laughs> top left. Same. Oh. He's on the top left where the three sentry gun guys are standing in there. Uh, just feel free to move around. Just don't go up there until... Uh, we have uh, wrapped up with Marazai. And as you step in there, and uh, face looks towards you, Marazai is the only one who can hear this conversation. Everybody else will be not be able to tap in, not hearing anything, because this room is pretty soundproof. And uh, he looks up at you, scanning you. You see a little green light emitting going from your legs up to your head. And down below. Oh, you seem to not be willingly here. How about you and I struck a deal? Hmm. It depends what the deal is. Well, I know of the... the so-called Mr. GR, who is sending you up here. I know of an 
supposed rogue trader, as my computers have calculated in new frigates outside of my vessel space, I could use an advancement of such machinery, and you would be an suitable captain for such ship. You don't need to bow down to these lesser creatures, or as uh, and he's going, his eyeballs are going up, and he's like calculating something. Mon Kai, as you call them, are operating. If you can assure me you'll reunite me with the rogue trader, I'll do what you ask. He shall be yours. And he reaches out a hand. I nod. There. Well then. And in that moment, the lights that went up are being shut down. The sentries that have been staying still all of a sudden get motion. And uh, you see Marazai stepping out with an quite chunky individual standing here next to Jai and Ilianth. Be so kind as to <laughs> move up over if you want to. Oh, hello, big boy. He looks at you, rubs his belly, and goes, <laughs> Halt, intruders. You have disrupted the sacred rites of the machine god. Do you dare to approach Mago Santa One uninvited? You stand on the precipice of damnation, for you have been marked as naughty. In the Omnissiah's ledger, the Omnissiah's wrath is nothing compared to the punishment I shall met out. Your intrusion is an affront to the order of the machine, and you shall be judged accordingly. Prepare for the retribution of Magos Santa One, for the gifts I bring are not of benevolence, but of calculated justice. And with that, his sentry gun soldiers are aiming down at you and starting wildly firing into the mass group where you are standing. Please, everybody, make me an agility check, except of Marajai, as you are apparently on the side of our Magos. No. <laughs> Then we grab everybody here. Some okay. really bad rolls. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Going to combat. Don't don't click on the combat roll up top yet. Just let me catch up with the agility jacks. Oh, one moment. <clears throat> Good. Uh, Ulfar Argenta. Pascal and Jai manage to quickly jump aside as the hail of fire comes down at you. But everybody else is one moment too close. Oh, shit. Uh, one, one moment too late. You hear a screech from Cassia as one of the bullets pierces through her forearm, forearm luckily as it not explodes within her body because bolt bullets as they hit a target normally explode wildly so you have quite a hole in your forearm uh the same oh. goes for uh, argenta she gets really so, nicely so hit they... say again I, i'm sorry i was just uh asking about the rolls like was was high bad for this one yeah High rolls in the okay. system of Rogue Trader are bad. Roll, roll, okay, yes. Uh, low <laughs> rolls are the ones we need. Or again, so you get hit yes. in the stomach. Luckily, your Deptosaurus armor can withstand the blow. The bullet hits you in the chest. It explodes. 
and the gravity of the impact throws you back into the packed containers there with some ribbons next to you where you kind of like smack into the ground and Iliath sadly also did manage to jump aside you are getting hit by the arm that holds the sniper rifle and with a lush explosion and I, thrilling I'm pain. right next yeah. I'm right next to Iliath am I able to swap places with them you could reach in as you see the shot coming to her if you want to. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Give me, please, a toughness check on your side. Oh, that's a two. Hang on. I don't want to roll two of those. Ooh. That's not good. That's not, that's not good. Oh, no. The Emperor is Appreciate not looking it, on your I, I might be backhanding you into next week here. <laughs> yeah. At least you tried. Reaching into the shot that uh, aims at her body, body center. It hits your gauntlet and with a really kind of like stinking flesh burning smell, your hand flies, nearly backslapping Iliath in the face past her hair. She in the last second can duck as your hand is flying over it. Your plasma pistol flies off into the unknown and is shot out of your hands. Your arm feels numb and painful, but your space marine armor could withstand the shot, luckily. Okay. <laughs> I love our tech, tech priest technology. <laughs> accompanying us here so please roll initiative up top and then we have our showdown roll on those little dice icons oh those are good rolls for the enemy and then do we, we all need to do it yep yeah yeah click on those the picture on top of you so everybody gets an initiative and then i can click start combat and uh Good. It seems like everybody did. Mess of all the dice. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Begin combat. Iliath, you are first just being protected by Ulfar, uh, Ulfar's hand. Nearly being slapped by it as well. You see the sentry guns being sanctioned now, going at you. And uh, it looks like one of your companions seems to stand side by side with... What's supposed this Magus Santa? What do you I do? must thank you, Ufa. First and for foremost. Um, we still need you, Zenos. <laughs> Just appreciate it. Nobody has Sorry. baby girl on our watch. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> baby girl. Baby Iliad. Sorry, what was the last thing in you the said? Corner. They should be purged <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> it is up to you. You see the sentry guns up there in the bank. There's guys with turrets on the shoulder aiming down at you. And uh, Ul uh, Ulfar just managed to catch one of the bolts coming out of those guys shot shooting at you. And you see Argenta flying right next to you from the right. She was standing next to you. All of a sudden, she's not in like five meters back in some crates with ribbons trying to get her posture back and uh, Cassia is staring at her arm that apparently has a hole in it and is bleeding is it, well, is obviously it... oh I, sorry no I'm going to try to take this mofo down okay who are you going for <laughs> oh um uh, oh so also the the three little guys over there <laughs> exactly yeah. With, um, um, you have your Xenos colleague, who's apparently one. standing next to uh, the Magus, mm -hmm. who is not being the attacked. Betrayer. You have the sentry guns up there, who are shooting at you, and you have the Magus himself standing in your line of sight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go for the one who's shooting at me. Okay. And that would be the sentry gun to the very left. Mm-hmm. 
please throw me in ballistics roll at the hundreds and we check your ballistics to see if you are making it 17. Woo! Are you doing anything else while you're aiming good. and shooting? I am praying to the stars to be on my side today. You're closing <laughs> your eyes, you're praying to the stars, you aim, you have them in your crosshair. You Meditating. Know, this shot is lethal. And as you try to pull the trigger, it doesn't work. No! <laughs> oh. oh, blimey, I have to sing again. <laughs> the target that has been shot at you uh, is uh, has been shooting at you is trying it again. And he finally shoots above your head, hitting some machinery in the back. Maybe even a colleague servitor just, just flops in the background, uh, followed by his colleague who is uh, attempting to shoot wildly into the group as well. Also apparently missing. You are very lucky. <laughs> and <laughs> so, Thank you, stars. Up next, you hear an, an electronic humming sound and, and dzz, 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 sound coming up. And Pascal seems to hear it as the loudest as through the window, all of a sudden, an servo skull comes flying out, holding some decorations in his hand, similar to the ones you are entangled with. And he just comes down at you, trying to electrocute yourself uh trying to electrocute you with the with the cables and uh he is succeeding in that your circuits run wild you feel a thrilling pain through all your body as high volts of electricity are shooting through you you know you will not be able to withstand this kind of electricity voltage for a long time you want to go away there if you don't want to end this lethally. Another service call flies out of the office, comes out into the middle, and tries with a little candy cane, apparently, with some spikes on it, to bonk Ulfar on the head. As everybody's moving with, his, with their eyes towards Ulfar's face, you noticed that, oddly, a lot of Ulfar's lush, brownish, reddish hair combination that he had is starting to turn gray white and uh, that little thing is trying to bonk you succeeds in doing so and with a shrill pain in your skull it stucks his little candy cane in there but cannot move it out it's like zzz, 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 oh. trying to fly out of it and you have an kind of thorn of the size of an index finger stuck somewhere in your head. Big so mistake. Bleed is running down from your forehead. Up next, we have Jai. Jai, what are you doing? Shoot me okay, the I'm going to... <laughs> I think I can take a step uh, diagonal to the big Santa Cruz over yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm going to grab him by the the beard and tentacle neck things and I want to like grab it and shoot my pistol like up into the neck um, and, and try to hold him and shoot him up like that. You, you try to do this to the servitor skull that is attacking Ulfar or to the uh, Santa? No the, no, the Santa with the beard. Santa with the beard. Gotcha. Give me please an strength and ballistic check. Okay. So two rolls. We have a 39. Uh -huh. And we have a 12. Ash mag. So let's see if uh, our dear Santa can understand your grab. You manage to grab Get his down, beard. Down. You pull him down and put the pistol under his uh, grown beard. Saying what again? Ash mag. Ash mag. You pull the trigger and with a sud sound. It goes through his jaw, through his back side of the head, stuck somewhere in the roof and the ceiling. And for a second, the left eye that is somewhat of an 
it looks like an, a camera nearly that zooms in and out and has like a little gel, uh, gelbish, yellowish emanating <laughs> color going out of it. It flickers a little bit mm -hmm. and it zoom shuts down for a second and boots back up and his head is tilting towards you now. Mm. And with that, it's Santa's turn and he tries to forcefully grab you as well on the back of your body and try to lift you up and his motion is going towards his sack in the back throw me please at the hundreds against my throw <laughs> oh that should be <laughs> come on now come on now don't roll a 99 <laughs> 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 Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait, hang, hang on a second. The whole time. The Shut whole time. Up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not going to roll a 99 that way. Oh my god. Shy rolls a 99. Oh my goodness. Okay, I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> so Two numbers out of a hundred. And you fucked it up. <laughs> you know, one might call that lucky to hit only, you know, one of the two that you needed. Does the goblin I'm shoving go his bag. <laughs> well, you land. Everybody sees that you are being pulled over his shoulder. And it normally should fill up the the green sack that is hanging on his back. And, you know, like show the, the volume and contours of your body. But... It makes like a little wiggling motion and you can see Jai's feet for a second wiggling around and she's gone in that sack. But it looks like it it doesn't show her form in, in, in the sack hanging there. Something feels very weird and off and, and sinister cackling mechanical sound comes out from Santa. And as he does that, next to Ulfar in that box, something rattles. Some odd bonking sound coming from out here. Oh. Jai has just disappeared. <laughs> you can hear some screaming sounds out of there. And in that very moment, that box pops up opened. And a humanoid-looking guy comes out there. His bare feet, he has a tank top on, he has a little protection on the knee, and he's leaping out there higher than Ulfar himself. And two bolt shots coming out of him. Going straight into the body of Magus Sansa. The sack behind him drops on the ground, and uh, Jai quickly has now a grip of the ground, back paddling out of it, being outside of the back behind him. And as the Magus seems to be hit, the character of uh, the box appears with a loud yell, landing next to Ulfar, screaming, Yippee Kaye, mother! <laughs> And with that, ladies and gentlemen, now I understand. we have uh, <laughs> sadly reached the end of uh, our session, leaving up with a cliffhanger. <laughs> if you manage to deal with this Magus and the situation of uh, what happened there, let us quickly hop over to the battle scene one more time to show the details of all the fantastic tokens and the work that the artists did on the battle map. And... Uh, Oh, beautiful. It is Wills Brulis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Great. Oh. For those who don't know, uh, it's apparently oh, yeah. a thing that uh, Die Hard is in Christmas movie, so I thought he... It is. Apparently. All right. Apparently. I mean, it takes it's like confirmed. You, have you really confirmed. wanted to meet okay, Wills gotcha. Brulis? It is confirmed. It is confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> the patron saint of John McClane is a real thing. Cassia really wanted his autograph, but she had no aid for a while, and she passed out, so... 
Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's grab uh, five to maximum ten more minutes to then set you free as you have uh, really, thank you again, big, big time, uh, struggled here with me telling an wonderful, <laughs> hopefully wonderful story. I'll let Chad now also <laughs> intervene and uh, ask questions if they have questions towards you guys. Do you guys have any message out there to our dear viewers? Yes, thank you for joining us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget that uh, uh, the uh, Tiltify is up for the charity. Exactly. Charity goes up until the end of the year. We'll be closed with New Year's and all 100 plus donors will get all these assets that we have here. Uh, three fantastic made battle maps plus over 40-ish tokens that have been prepared that I maybe even a little bit of it could use in our uh, session here. If you guys want to, well, that will take, take probably too much to load. I will just send you a wonderful screenshot of the factory that we have uh, sadly missed. We have prepared some uh, psychic uh, things to go down, but uh, we had to cut short because of time. Uh, Chad ask part two tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not tomorrow. It took so I'm, much to I'm, just get this many today, yeah, in one right, place. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. next year. I mean, we're, we're, we're missing one who def desperately wants to be here. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry, I'm allowed. Ian, oh. Ian wanted to be here, but yes. the, your time is, you know, with all these different time zones and everything, it get, it's very know, hard the wires get up, crossed. Yeah. Things happen, you know. <laughs> Big, big hearts to yeah. to Ian, the voice of Avalart. Sadly, either time consumption or something hiccup happened there that we could not have him with us. Sadly, mid-session, we could not drag him into the show as this would require half an hour of resetting up all the cameras into the frames. Uh, as uh, Yeah, I'm sadly not too fast for that, but big thanks <laughs> for nonetheless sitting down with us and uh, uh, preparing this all and uh, taking your time to deal with me. <laughs> I hope for... <laughs> Thank you for setting oh, it all yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Yeah. So much. Thank you Dungeon Master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this feels so awkward. Um, <laughs> especially to you who have not played such thing before. How was your experience? Yeah, it was fun. This was good. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, sure. I'm sad that Cassia bled out for the last 40 minutes, but <laughs> yeah. oh, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's fine. That's, I'm just, sorry you know, for being lost. Right. She's fine. Just poo-poo lost... it with some warp magic. You know, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, she's all right. Just <laughs> letting the servants do the hard work. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> sorry, you couldn't get back through the warp, and uh, something happened to the ship. Oops, but yeah. <laughs> oh dear. And they all yeah. died. Yeah. Yeah. They all died. Yeah. They all died horribly. Oh well. Yeah. Merry love Christmas. It, but yeah, no, it was very fun. Thank you so much. Thanks Sadly, for having Sadly, us. we would have had to wrap it up a little bit quicker. Would have loved to see what uh, Marajai would have in store for his yeah. last twist backstabbing. Did you guys expect this? Yes. Son of a bitch. Absolutely. I expect this all I the time from expected. every Xenos. Exactly. <laughs> Xenos scum. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Well, with that, ladies and gentle beards, I uh, thank you again for accompanying me on this little storyline over here. I will let my dear, dear voice actors here to do into their merry, merry uh, ways. Wish you happy holidays. Thanks a lot for being here, supporting this charity event, for putting up your precious, precious time to present and represent the characters that you are playing in Rogue Trader Warhammer 40k and CRPG that just came out. And uh, thanks a lot to you guys. I wish you all Enjoy, the best. everyone. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you for having Have us. Have a lovely uh, Christmas. Yes, thank Happy you. holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas. Take yeah. care. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe a part two. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> With that, oh. I wish you all farewell. <laughs>